Hey Booktube, let me tell you all about the Tucson Festival of Books. I'm Jen and I talk about audiobooks, but today I want to tell you all about my uh, trip to Tucson, Arizona and the Tucson Festival of Books. This was a festival that I had never been to before and it was fantastic. So fantastic. I had the best time. I think part of the reason, actually most of the reason that it was so fantastic was that I, I was with my good, good, best book friend, Karen. I got to stay with her. I got to snuggle with her dog, Molly, who is such a sweetheart. And we just had a blast. We really did. We are just, you know, there's just some people that you click with. And she and I just clicked together just like two peas in a pod. It was great. So the Tucson Festival of Books is uh, my, let's see, one, two, third, uh, third, no, fourth book festival that I've been to in my life. Uh, the first one was Utopia, and that is a convention held in Nashville, Tennessee, and it's mostly romance authors. So then I went to Y'all Fest. Y'all Fest is held in Charleston, South Carolina, and I did this about two years ago. Now that festival has a lot of authors and a lot of venues that happen uh, kind of around about a two or three block radius within uh, downtown Charleston. So you end up standing in line kind of a little while. I remember standing in a line for about an hour, maybe a little more than an hour. Last spring I went to BookCon and what a nightmare. Oh my gosh. You stood in a line that wrapped pretty much around a city block just to get in so that you could stand in at least one more line to get a bracelet so that you could stand in yet another line to have your books signed. No, never again. That was a nightmare. Well, this time, Karen said, you are not going to believe how relaxed and easy this book festival is. And I said, okay, well, I trust you. Thinking, I'll believe it when I see it. But I do trust her. I was astounded. Literally astounded. This is held on the uh, University of Arizona campus there in Tucson. And so it's a, you do a little bit of walking, but we didn't do a lot of walking because, you know, everything was kind of central to where we wanted to go. There were tents and they had book stores within the tents that would feature signings and would carry the books of those authors. And then there was the U of A bookstore right there where you could go and try and find anything that you couldn't find at the other bookstores. And then a whole slew of other things, publishing companies and authors and used book tents, you know, um, places in town. There were several local bookstores represented. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. And the best, well, the best part was being with Karen. But the second best thing was that I don't think I stood in line to have anything signed for more than 10 minutes. Now, they didn't have the huge list of authors that BookCon had or that Y'all Fest had. But you know what? They had a lot of authors and a lot of authors that I care about and that I, whose books I own and love. So I was really happy about that. And I had the wonderful, these wonderful conversations with the authors. So let me just get to the books that I both bought and had signed. Now, I didn't take a lot of books with me because I didn't have some of them. And I thought as much as I desperately love Southwest Airlines, they do have a weight limit on the amount of uh, stuff you can put in one bag. Anyway, so I shipped them all back to myself. And so I have three boxes over here. Shannon Messenger was there and she wrote the Let the Sky Fall trilogy. And I had just Let the Sky Fall. I love this cover. There's been a cover change and I talked with her about that. And she said that uh, because she writes a lot of middle grade books, there's her signature, she had a lot of parents coming up and seeing this cover sitting there um, for a YA series and the kids would say, hey, what's that about? And parents would go, I, I don't know. I don't, I think that might be a little old for you. And it was because of the romantic uh, way that this cover looks. And now I love this. I love the colors of it. I think it's pretty indicative of the story, but 
the cover has changed and that's the only uh, one I owned. So I knew I wanted to buy the third book which is out only in hardback. It hasn't come out in paperback. But then I also wanted my covers to match. So I bought them all. Two in paperback and one in hardback. Now I have the option now to get the, uh, the second book which also comes in this cover. Uh, it's available in this cover and then have the third book um, just be this one. I have them all in hardback or I can just get this in paperback when it comes out. You know, whatever. But these are the new covers. So there's Let the Sky Fall. And of course she signed them all. She was delightful. She was wonderful. Great to sit and listen to. Oh, that was Let the Storm Break. That's the second book. This is the first book. And then this is the third book. Again, only available in hardback so far. And um, the first two books are available on audio. They're narrated by Kristen Lee and Nick Podell, and they are fantastic. Wonderful narration. But the third book, for some reason, the publisher hasn't picked it up, so I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe it's because of her success with her other series, which is much more middle grade. She had the coolest purse. She was sitting with Alexandra Bracken. Uh, they were getting ready to leave. We'd had them sign some things. And she pulls out this purse and sits it on the table. And I thought, oh, that is amazing. So it looks like this. It was fantastic. I thought, you get the prize. You get the prize for the best purse in the whole place. So she was a lot of fun. I got to see Amy Engel, and I love her. I, I think she's a delightful person anyway. And you know what? We walked right up. Nobody was in front of her. Just walked right up, and there you were. I had read The Roanoke Girls on audio. I wasn't going to buy it because it's kind of dark. And I thought, mm, I don't know if I want to do that. But when I saw it there, I thought, you know what? She's an auto buy author for me, so I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. This is kind of a suspenseful, uh, dark adult uh, story. And I didn't really talk too much to her about it. Um, she went ahead and signed it for me. But I'm glad I bought it. Uh, ultimately, it's not the kind of thing that I read, which is why I wasn't going to buy it. But I ended up doing it. I'm glad I did. I think it was a, a smart purchase. Now, I already have the Book of Ivy. This is uh, the first book in a duology. The second book is called The Revolution of Ivy. It's only available in paperback, and I didn't have The Revolution of Ivy. I thought, well, I'll just buy that when I get there. Well, it turns out none of the stores had the second book, so I thought, you know what? That just gives me a reason to catch her at another signing somewhere sometime. Um, I'll go ahead and order this at some point, and then I'll find her and have her sign it. So there's where she signed that. I love, love this duology. It's YA. It's dystopian. It's a great story. It's, it's just so well written. Best ending. Um, she, and I, one of the things I told her was, thank you. Thank you for not making this a trilogy because a middle book just would have been filler and needless. And you, you know, you did the perfect thing, this ending. She, like, she did it all right. So it was fun to get to tell her that. There was a children's author there, and actually I say children's, but um, one of the things I picked up is a graphic novel of his. I had picked up The Storm in the Barn by Mac Phelan a long time ago, and I was surprised to see that he was one of the authors that was going to be there. I picked this up at Ollie's because I saw the cover and I thought, oh, I love, love that illustration style. And I truly do. It is beautiful. I mean, these illustrations, I wish I could hold this so that I can show you, but they are just gorgeous. Just beautiful. And this is all about the Dust Bowl in the 1930s in Kansas. And it's about a boy being afraid of something and learning how to stand up for himself and stand up for what he knows is right. It's just really, really a good story. And not only that, but a beautiful book. So I wanted to have him sign it. So he did. And he didn't just sign it. He drew something while he signed it. It was just so cool. And because I knew I loved the illustrations that he did, I was walking through um, one of the bookstore tents. And I was picking up some other things that I wanted to buy. And I saw this, Snow White, by him. And this is a graphic novel that he's done. And it's kind of a cool thing. It's 1920. Um, pre-depression New York City and 
So the story is set there, and it's a retelling of Snow White, obviously. And the thing I loved that grabbed me straight away was this. She is asleep in what amounts to a glass coffin, but she's, she's behind um, a display window of a store. Uh, kind of like Macy's, you know, where they have the mannequins and stuff, and she's asleep in inside there. So, had him sign this too. He had two pens in front of him, and this is what he drew. How cool is that? He was, and he was so nice. What a great guy. And there was no one standing in front of him. It's funny because uh, he was at a, a line of tables and there were a lot of people and a lot of very popular authors. And I ended up standing in like two lines before I figured out that there was no one in front of him. So I just walked right up and said, I, I, you know, these are fabulous books and I'm so impressed and, you know, thank you for writing them. I forget what I said. I don't know. I didn't make a complete idiot out of myself, but close. I got to see Sharon Cameron, who wrote The Forgetting, and I love this book. This is another one of my top books from last year. This is YA Dystopian. And it's the great premise, really great premise. I got to see her do a panel discussion and she is so animated and fun and extroverted. And she's one of those people that you look at and you think, for an author, this is no big deal for her to get to do these signings and um, you know, having to travel and do a book tour. Uh, she just seemed like it was a lot of fun for her because she loves people. So she was really fun to get to talk to and she signed it. And then she also stuck this in there, which was kind of cool, and signed that. So it's just a little postcard, but I will use that as a bookmark. I had listened to that and loved it. And so because I knew that I loved that book, and I knew she had written some other things, but I didn't know what, and then I came across Rook. And I thought, oh, I knew about that book. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna grab that too. So I did, I picked it up, and it is loose retelling of the Scarlet Pimpernel in France, but it's set in the future. And I could read you a lot of stuff from the back, but instead of doing that, I'm just gonna show you where she signed it. So I'm looking forward to reading this, and I forget who narrates it. I do think it's on audio. I'm pretty sure it is. So this is going in my to-be-read pile near the top because I really want to get to it soon. It looks really good. Alexandra Bracken was there, and I had read Passenger and Wayfarer, which is a duology, the most recent duology that she wrote, and I didn't own either one. And because of that, I thought, well, I'll just buy them when I get there. So I did. Got them both. I had read Passenger, but I had not read Wayfarer. I have this to read, but um, with this one, this is narrated by Saskia Marleveld, and I tried listening to it, and then I did a whole review on mainly the narration for this book, and I had to quit halfway through because I just I hated it. I thought it was just so badly done. But I like the story. It's time travel. It's YA time travel. I don't think I liked it as well as The Darkest Minds, uh, which is her previous trilogy, which is a YA kind of uh, post-apocalyptic YA. But this was still good. And I thought, you know, I'm glad I read it. And now I'm glad I own it. Because again, she's another auto buy author for me. And then I picked up Wayfarer. I have this as an ebook ready to read, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. So she signed it. She was, I keep using this word delightful, but she really was. She was so gracious, so gracious. And you could tell that uh, events like this wear her out. And yet she was always smiling and always willing to talk and willing to sign things and very sweet all the time. Just, you know, the panel discussions with her were always interesting. She was getting ready to go to law school when she realized I hate this idea and I don't want to do this. So she started writing and um, thank goodness for all of us she did because I love her books. She was just, just wonderful. She was just a wonderful person to talk to. 
Maggie Stiefvater was there, and of course she's the author of The Raven Cycle, and she's also the author of The Scorpio Races, and this on audio is narrated by Fiona Hardingham and Steve West, and I tried to listen to it a long time ago, long time ago, and couldn't get into it. I think it was the time of year, where I was, what I was doing, just being in the right headspace, I just wasn't. So I thought, you know what, I want, I want to give it another try. So I went ahead and I got um, this paperback coffee, copy and she signed it and she drew this horse. Now she is one interesting person, let me tell you. I can tell that she's relatively introverted and very creative because this woman, this woman, she writes books, she writes music, she draws, she's done uh, like alternative covers for her books, um, so she's an artist. And I was kind of talking about that and I was saying, is there anything you don't do? And she said, I don't vacuum. <laughs> Yeah, me neither. I'm with you right there. So I had the Wolves of Mercy Falls series, and so she was gracious enough to sign all of these. Is that one? Covers. And these aren't end papers, but these just opening. There we go. There's Linger, and then this is Forever. I love this series because I love the narrators who do it. Primarily Jenna Lamia, who does um, the main character of Grace. And I love the romance in these books um, because it's like an old married couple. They're just very sweet together, and I, I just love the way that that relationship plays out. Well, I have a copy of The Raven King that Karen actually got me last year at BookCon. So I wanted to get the rest of The Raven Boys books because although I am not over the moon about that series, it's weird. Because she's just got a weird thing going on in her brain. She really does. She Oh, another thing she does is uh, she loves cars, fast cars, old cars. <laughs> I don't know. Go figure. Um, so I thought I would pick up all of the books there, except for the one I already have, which is the last one, The Raven King, in hardback. Well, they didn't end up having the first two books. They had the whole thing in paperback, but I thought, well, I already have the final book in hardback. So I bought this one, which is Blue Lily, Lily Blue, which is book three. Book three, yes. And she signed it. It's a beautiful book. These books are so pretty. and. That's another reason I wanted them, because I thought, if nothing else, um, it's a good story. It's kind of a weird story, but they look pretty on the shelf, and she was there to sign them. So those are all the books that I bought and had signed, and I have to tell you one more thing about that festival. Karen and I went to the Scottsdale Arts Festival, which is an actual arts festival. It's not an arts and crafts festival. This was true art, beautiful art, amazing art. I took so many pictures, and we were getting ready to leave. I happened to see a guy walking with a hat, and I thought, I love that hat. Where did he get that hat? So we went over to this kid's area. Well, they were making them. And you didn't have to be a kid to do it, because we asked. And they said, sure, sure, you can make one. So we each made hats. Now, here is how it works. Mine obviously had to go through being on a plane and wadded up in my suitcase and all that kind of thing. But it is such a cool idea. So, you know, remember this if you ever have a kid's event that you need a craft for. This really is so smart. I don't know who thought it up, but it's just genius. So we walked around um, the first day of the Tucson Festival with these on. And I cannot, I really, seriously, we got stopped like every 10 minutes because people were going, where'd you get that hat? Can I get a hat like that? And we kept saying, 
Well, we got it yesterday at the Scottsdale Arts Festival. And so, yeah, it was kind of, um, I, I know that people were disappointed that they couldn't go make a hat, but we would stand there and tell them, here's how do you do it, you know? And my last thing about the festival, I'll save till the end. While I was there, after the festival ended and we drove home on Sunday and Karen, the next day on Monday, had a meeting. It was being held in a library. This little library had an area where they had a lot of discards that you could buy and it was set up like a little bookshop. So, of course, I had to look through those and I bought more books. <laughs> but they were such a good deal. And I never feel bad about that because you're supporting the library. Well, the first thing that caught my eye was Brightly Woven by Alexandra Bracken. This, I think, if I'm not mistaken, was her debut novel. Yeah, if only I'd had it with me the day before. I really can't tell you what it's about other than I think it's fantasy. So that was, that was a find. Then I found A Symphony of Echoes. This is by Jody Taylor. It is book two in the Chronicles of St. Mary's, which is an adult book about time travel. And it is one of the funniest series I think I've ever read. It's so funny. And uh, the first book in this series is called Just One Damn Thing After Another. And it's just so good. And I think there are like, up to about eight books now. But when I saw this, I thought, oh, yes, that needs to come home with me. So uh, I haven't read it yet. So at least now I can read it in print or I can listen to it. And I really like the narrators. Now this was just impulsive and I thought, I wanna know what all the fuss is about. J.R. Ward is a very well-known adult paranormal romance writer. And I thought, and plus she's, this is a pseudonym for like two or three other names that she writes under. And she does crime and suspense and romance and whatever else. I don't know. She's kind of like Nora Roberts and has all those, I don't know, maybe she is Nora Roberts. I don't know. No, I don't think so because that's not Nora Roberts. But anyway, uh, this is a novel of the fallen angels, and I think I looked in here. Oh, pretty end papers, too. And I looked in here, and I, it is book four of the novels of the fallen angels. I don't know if you have to read them in order. I don't know. I just want to know what the fuss is about. And the last book I have is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. And this is a story that is set in Ohio, which is where I'm from, about an Asian family. And uh, they have at least two daughters. I don't know if they have more children, but one of the daughters dies and the other one has to cope with it. And uh, the family has to cope with the death of this daughter. And so it's kind of how they do that. And this has gotten a lot of acclaim in the YA community because it's kind of one of those contemporary books that's about an important thing. So when I saw it, I thought, I, I don't know that I ever would have thought that I wanted to read it if it hadn't been right there in front of me. So I think at one point I had it on audio or uh, maybe I got it from the library and had to give it back or something like that. I don't know, but now I have it to read. And that was the Tucson Book Festival. Now this last thing that I saved to tell you, I was sitting waiting for Karen or the, I think she and I were both sitting and waiting and she had gotten up to go get something to drink or something. And right in front of me, this guy comes walking by with a parrot on his shoulder. Well, apparently he's there every year. So I'm taking pictures of this, you know, this parrot and the people who would walk up and go, ooh, it's a parrot, you know, and does he talk and all this kind of thing. So the guy noticed that I am, you know, sitting four or five feet away from him and I'm taking all these pictures and he goes, he comes around beside me. He goes, here, I'll put him on your shoulder and you can take a selfie. And I'm like, what? And the next thing I feel are these talons on my shoulder. It didn't hurt or anything like that. So I turned my photo around and I started taking selfies with him. And he was kind of talking to me. And ironically, the one animal sound I do really well is a bird. So I went, eh. He <laughs> was talking to me. It was so much fun. It was really cool. Best trip. Best trip. I'm definitely going to try and do it next year, uh, if at all possible. If, it's, if I get to do one book thing next year, that's going to be what I do because it was so much fun. Karen was an amazingly gracious host, and I loved being with her. I loved where she lives, and she's in Scottsdale. So you, just getting to know that whole area was really fun, and, of course, the book festival was, festival was amazing. So anyway... 
that's kind of the whole trip. So if you have read any of the books or have any experiences with any of these authors, or if you are from Tucson or if you've been to the festival or, you know, anything like that, by all means, let's talk about it in comments. You know how I love to do that. So yeah, that is it for now from me. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.